This is a good example about uh, a variable that has normal distribution and um, you can read here that the variable uh, under subject here is uh, the amount of gas um, uh, that is sold daily by gas station and again <clears throat> from historical data <clears throat> we can tell the distribution of this variable so we're given that it has a normal distribution okay um, this has to be given to you. you cannot get it on your own at least in this um, course uh, with a mean of thousand remember the two parameters of a normal distribution is the mean and standard deviation and they have to be given to you so mu, mu is thousand um, and sigma is hundred okay so we can uh, write that that demand is our variable uh, daily demand in fact to be specific it is normally distributed and these are the two parameters the mean and standard deviation now the manager just um, uh, realized that they have 1100 gallons of gas in storage right so this is what they can use to sell during the day why because they are telling us that the next delivery will happen at the end of the day at the close of the day so it would be too late to use that new delivery right the reason why i i i insist to use this um, problem in my classes that it also um, improve your skills on how to read a real life problem and how to convert that into or how to convert uh, uh, the question into a probability statement and once you reach that uh, stage honestly it becomes very technical it's only about reading the z-table uh, which is something that you will become very very uh, good at it but honestly in real life you know, what's more uh, challenging for you is how to um, how to express uh, uh, the question into a probability statement right so the question here uh, the manager would like to know the probability that he will have enough regular gas gasoline to satisfy today's demand okay so how do we represent that mathematically so we are saying that we want to find the priority of having enough gas to satisfy today's demand when you will be able to have enough gas remember what do you have now you have a gas in your storage and this is 1100 so in which case you will have enough gas when demand is less when what you have in storage right so i can write that that this is the priority that today's demand is less than or let me just uh, clean this up for you to to be able to read it carefully because this is very important okay so this is the priority that today's demand which we recognize as being a variable that has a normal distribution here okay is less than what we have in storage so in other words this is p of d less or equal than 1100 and this is what i was referring to guys this is very important to know that this is what we're looking at and once you reach this stage everything or what coming next is very technical very easy for you okay so this is p of d less or equal than 1100 let me standardize the variable d how do I standardize? Using the equivalence, uh, the equation z equal x minus mu over sigma. So let me, in this priority statement, subtract the mu and divide by sigma in the two on the two parts of the inequality. So here we go. I am I have the right to do that, right? And why I'm doing this specifically because I know that this now is z, right? And this one is a value. Is a value why because these are all numbers now I can find this exact value so this probability statement is now equal to that this is P of Z right less or equal than 1 1100 minus 1000 that's 100 over 100 that's 1 so what do we do now we go and look in the Z table what's P of Z less or equal than 1 and this will be 
P of D less or equal than 1100, meaning that this will be the priority that I will have enough gas to satisfy today's, today's demand. So let's see, this is an extract of your, of the Z table. We want Z equal to 1, so this is Z equal to 1, and it's exactly 1. So this is the area. Here we go. So this is probability of Z less or equal than 1, which means this is our final answer. This is the priority that will have enough gas to satisfy today's demand. I hope that you understood this uh, problem. Honestly, it's a very important, um, it has a very good context, and um, it's a good practice to read the Z table again. Let's do another example about normal distribution, but it's a different context, of course. So here, what do we have? Um, we have an investment uh, whose return, so return is normally distributed. We're given that. And the parameters are the mean is 10%, standard deviation is 5%. And we have two questions. First, let's define our variable. It's very, very important. Always start by defining very well your variable. What's my variable here? It is the return on investment, right? So let's denote that by R. And this is in percentage. This is important, why? Because now I don't want to, to, to worry about the percentages here. Okay, so it's 10%, so R is 10, because I'm saying that R is in percentage. So now I can neglect the percentage sign, which will make my life much easier. So. What do we know about R? We are given that R is normally distributed. And here we go. Um, sorry, before that. Uh, just to illustrate what do I mean by ignoring the, the percentage sign. So if I read somewhere that R is 3, so that I interpret that as being a return on, this in, on investment of 3%. Okay, But I want to make things simple and get rid of the percentage sign. Okay, so now I can write what I know about R. Now that I defined it, R is a normally distributed variable with a mean of 10. I don't, you see, I don't need the percentage sign anymore, which makes it easier for me for my notations. And standard deviation of 5. And the first question is, determine the priority of losing money. Again, I like this problem specifically because it, it does not ask you a very direct question. Find P of R less or equal than 2. No, I don't like these kind of questions. Okay, first you need to interpret what's given to you in the real life uh, question, in real life problem, and try to convert that into a probability statement. So when do we lose? Remember that R is a return on investment. So losing money is what means what? Meaning that there's no return or there's a negative return, which allow me then to uh, convert what's given into probability of negative return. Meaning that what? This is P of R less or equal than zero. And again, as I said in the previous problem, once you reach this probability statement stage, then everything is very uh, simple for you. Okay, what do you think would be my next step? I need to standardize my R, right? So I will write R minus mu over sigma, less or equal than zero minus mu over sigma, where mu is 10, sigma is 5. So I converted now my probability in R into a probability in Z. So this is P of Z less or equal than minus 2, right? 0 minus 10, minus 10 over 5, minus 2. So let's go ahead and see the extract of the Z table. Here we go. We want Z is minus 2. So minus 2.0, so exactly. So I look in the first column, which correspond to 0, 0.00. Okay, so that's 0 0.0228. And this will be our answer. So th there's a 2.28% that we're going to lose money. Okay, part B, find the priority of losing money again, but now when the standard deviation is 10%, which means uh, uh, now 
uh, in the upper notation here when I wrote R is normally distributed with a mean of 10 and standard deviation of 5 now uh, uh, this is 10 okay so this is p of r less or equal than zero again losing money so also i will standardize okay and now you notice that i'm dividing by 10 why because standard deviation is now 10. so this means that this probability is equal to z less or equal than minus one also we'll find that from the z table minus one we have i think done that before and this is the area so that's equal to 15.87 percent so you can see that when the standard deviation is larger there's now more probability to lose money right because there's more variability in your variable in this variable okay let's move on we'll do maybe some uh two quick um, examples uh, that will uh, uh, that will offer you more practice about reading the table and that will be it.